This is a schematic plan of the continental Europe. What's interesting? If we want to colorify the states so that no two states sharing part of their borderline have the same color, four colors are enough. Blue, red, yellow and green. Actually, it doesn't apply just for Europe. We can equally colorify, say, United States, South America, Africa. But does it hold in general? Is it true that four colors are enough for any crazy map of connected areas we can make up? It is true, but the history of the matter was a bit tricky. It was an open problem of mathematics for a long time and the question was finally answered in middle 70s with the help of computer power. That invoked certain controversy about the proof. Should we believe computers? What if the computer made a mistake during the calculations and we cannot even check it? But as time flowed, we got used to the fact that computers are much more reliable than we are. So even the computer proof of the four color theorem is now considered to be valid and it's not a hot topic anymore. That may be the reason why it's so little known that a simple proof was discovered later. A proof that doesn't require computer calculations at all. We will present the entire proof in this video. Here we go. First, we need a lemma. In any map, we can find an area with no more than five neighbors. For instance, this one has one, two, three, four neighbors. This lemma is quite known. So if you already believe it, you can skip the video to seven minutes. For completeness, we'll prove the lemma here. To do that, we need graph theoretical perspective. Every area can be represented by a dot, the dots are called vertices, and two vertices are joined by an edge if the corresponding areas share some part of their border. This can be done in such a way that there are no intersecting edges. So the lemma is now translated to the statement that every planar graph, that's a graph in plane without edge intersections, contains a vertex with no more than five neighbors. We will prove the new version of the lemma and we don't need the original map anymore. We can see that the edges of the graph define again boundaries of some areas, though these are completely different from the original ones. These new areas are called faces. There is a formula putting together the number of vertices edges and faces in connected graphs, so-called Euler's formula. It says that the number V of vertices can be calculated as 1 plus the number of edges E minus the number of faces F. We can easily verify that formula. It is true for a graph composed of one vertex. Indeed, one vertex equals 1 plus 0 edges minus 0 faces. Any other connected graph can be constructed using the following two operations. Either we can join one new vertex to the graph using one edge, so one is added to both sides of the identity so it still holds, or we join two existing vertices using one new edge, and this defines one new face. Since edges are added and faces are subtracted, the right hand side doesn't change and the identity still holds. Using these two operations, we can build the entire graph. So the identity holds for any planar graph we can think of. In our example, eight vertices equals one plus 17 edges minus 10 faces. Now we estimate the number of faces. In particular, we compare double the number of edges and triple the number of faces. 2e simply computes the number of edges when every edge is doubled. We can notice that every face has at least three edges around it. 
There can be faces with more edges around them, but there is no face with just two edges. It's because we haven't allowed double edges in the original graph. So we can highlight three edges around every face. Altogether, three F edges are highlighted. It follows that 2e, the number of all the doubled edges, is at least 3f, the number of highlighted ones. A simple modification gives that f is no more than two-thirds of e. Since no more than two-thirds of e is subtracted from e in Euler's formula, at least one-third of the number of edges will remain. We eliminated the number of faces from the formula. We can forget them. Now we have that the number of vertices is strictly greater than one third of the number of edges, or equivalently, 6v is strictly greater than 2e. This time we interpret double the number of edges differently. Instead of slicing the edges lengthwise, we split them in the middle. So 2e computes the number of tails at particular vertices. There are v vertices and there are altogether 2e edges joined to them. That's strictly less than 6v. When we have v vertices and strictly less than 6v tails, there have to be a vertex with strictly less than 6 tails. That is a vertex with 5 neighbors or less. All right. So we proved the lemma stating that every map contains an area with five neighbors or less. We can move on to the proof of the four color theorem itself. We lead the proof by contradiction. Let us assume that the four color theorem is invalid. In that case, there have to be the smallest counterexample. That's a map with the minimal possible number of areas such that we cannot colorify it using four colors. Even the counterexample has to contain an area with no more than five neighbors, as we have shown a while ago. After removing this area, there are less areas than in the least counterexample. That means that the remaining map can be colored by four colors. To reach the contradiction, it remains to find the coloring of the original map. It will be the contradiction with the assumption that we've picked a counterexample. This case was easy since the removed area had just three neighbors. When the removed area has just three neighbors or less, there will be always a remaining suitable color. To finish the proof, we have to analyze the cases when the removed area has four or five neighbors. Let's start with four neighbors. If we cannot just pick the color for the middle, the neighbors have to share all four colors, say in that order. In that case, we try to change the color of one of its neighbors, say the blue one to green. It's not so simple because the blue square can already have some green neighbors, so we need to be a bit smarter here. We consider the whole blue-green component of the green square. That means that the component is all surrounded just by red and yellow areas. Now if we swap blue and green in the component, the coloring remains valid. The removed area can ultimately get the blue color. The only issue of such an approach is that the blue-green component could reach the opposite green square. We still can make the recoloring then, but we don't release the blue color for the middle. However, to face the issue, there have to exist a blue-green connection between the blue and the green square. The path can lead from the top or from the bottom, but in every case it separates the red square from the yellow one. Therefore, we can apply the same procedure and recolor the red square to yellow. We cannot reach the opposite yellow square, so the middle area can get the red color.
This finishes the case with four neighbors. The case of five neighbors will be similar. If the middle area cannot get a color directly, there have to be all four colors around it. In particular, one of them, say blue, have to appear twice. The blue squares can be next to each other or there can be one non-blue square between them. If there were two non-blue squares, we could see the space one from the other side. Let's start with the case when they are next to each other. The rest can be colored in, say, this way. As in the case of four neighbors, we try to recolor yellow square to the opposite blue, aiming to make the center yellow. If we fail, there have to be a yellow-blue connection between the yellow square and one of the blue squares. This connection separates the red square from the green one. So we can recolor the green square to red and put green into the middle. The last case is when there is a red square between the two blue squares. In that case, we try to recolor the red square to yellow or to green, aiming to make the center red. If both possibilities fail, there have to be both a red-yellow connection and a red-green connection. The left-red-yellow connection separates the left blue square from the opposite green one and similarly the right-red-green connection separates the right blue square from the opposite yellow one. That means that we can recolor the left blue square to green, the right one to yellow and make the center blue. We analyzed all the cases and the proof of the four color theorem is finished.